Hello there guys, welcome back to the NBA. And today we are going to be covering a match for the Battle of Guardiola, Mexico. This game is one of great hype. If you guys have not heard, my good friend and Emmanuel's good friend from Liga Beta, the one, the only Pablito, the one who is eats all me and Emmanuel's snacks, has joined the NBA Kalos replacing Matt and it couldn't be more hype for his first game playing the great Emmanuel the man who just single handedly destroyed Kanto and is a phenomenal competitor but in saying that Pablito is under the tutelage of Emmanuel and Emmanuel is a bit like Goldfinger from James Bond everything he touches turns to gold and I was so excited for this match I don't think words could contain my excitement for this match because I knew that Pablito would bring out all his tricks for the great Cess and I knew that Emmanuel would make sure that Pablito would feel the wrath of him for eating all his snacks. So I've watched this game once I'm going to have to update the kills and all that next. So let's take it. Let's look at the lineups for each team. Because this is the Battle of Guardiola. I don't know how many other leagues can say proudly that they boast a rivalry so fierce as the Battle of Guardiola we have in the NBA. And I hope you guys are hyped. Hit that like button if you are hyped for this match. I hope this is recording my system, my voice this time. Because my videos today that I've recorded has stuffed up. But on to this match. Emmanuel on the bottom of the screen in the blue red corner. You see, he's calm mind. Rest Talk, Spirit Tomb. You see Nutella, the Uxi, with Calm My, with uh, his rocker. You see Glover, the Hitmonchan, with Rapid Spin and Drain Punch. You see Ali, one of the one of his great things, because November first is a special day in the calendar. It's not only the day that I finish my exams; it is also Emmanuel's birthday. I'm pretty sure. Next up, we have Alvin. He might have been appeared in that lovable kids movie Alvin and the Chipmunks but he's here today to as Winston Churchill once said V for victory and Emmanuel was sure that Alvin will be his V for victory and whilst we have Francis this, this, the prankster the sneaky one Francis lurks in the shadows but Pablito he's he is no underdog here this these two as great as they are, are fierce and rivalry and I, I, I just can tell you now one thing about the NBA is we have a range of caliber of players but the one thing is, is we know that when you have rivalries in the NBA, those matches are the most hyped. These rivalries include, for me personally, is me against Techno, me against Lewis, and me against Mayo. A12 versus Wyatt is another one that we love to see. I know that um, Rob VA12, Rob VDD is another great one. And there are so many great rivalries, Grounded and Ez in D-League noobs and grounded we are going to have a match on our hands today and I'm so excited for this because this is going to be my match of the week because I was anticipating a great match from both of them. so Emmanuel I think his best lead is his Nutella and I think Pablito's best lead is also his Reggie Rock and that's what they want to do let me just sorry, let me just slow down a bit they both set up their rocks they want to make sure that their opponent is in the corner now Energy ball from Nutella is weak. Toxic from Reggie Rock, and I think I think Pablito has got a little upper hand here. Nutella not having toxic and being special defensive Reggie Rock is definitely going to help out. Glover comes in. Stone Edge miss. Oh, I really have because him on chance defense isn't as great as its special defense. He switches down here, which I think is the right play. Inatogenic. Emmanuel just makes a safe play. Drain punches, and I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. The one of the interesting things is we have the two. Sp Nutella comes in. Turgetic goes for a switches out into Magnus into Slowbro. Sorry, I don't know what he was predicting, but it was a good switch. I thought. Mega slow, mega Slowbro. That is he stays in regular form. Goes into Magnus zone. He goes for another energy ball, which is good. Critical hit. I think that really matters in the grand scheme of things. At fourteen percent, an interesting set on Pablito by going for the life orb vault switch on the Glover. Doing about 60%. I think it might have also been analytic by the looks of things. 60%, which is a great amount. Going out into his slow bro again. Emmanuel makes a safe play here, going for the rapid spin as slow bro goes for the scold. I think the advantage of 
a manual running rapid spin is greatly shown here. He goes into Katrina here, and this is where the game gets fun. A man you can just start freely setting up his calm minds with his Shadow Ball. Um, uh, Dark Ball, sorry. If he was Shadow Ball, he would have won the game, I think. And this would have been a 5-0. Rogero goes for the save Toxic, but Pablito should, unfortunately, not having many good checks to this thing, is really weakened. Um, when you look at the two teams, Stone Edge is a great move, but when you look at the two teams, um, the best thing that Pablito could have done is a Foresight um, Hitmonlee with like close combat. Or a Calm Mind Slowbro to set up alongside it. I mean, Carmine Slowbro does beat Katrina. But then again, it does outspeed. And Emmanuel really just sets up here nice and early just to make sure. Goes into the Jake just to go for the defog. Which he thinks is safe. But luckily for him, Emmanuel does not get that dark pulse. Emmanuel can sort of stall him out here. And Manuel just sort of keeps going for that dark policy because he knows how important it is. Dazzling Gleam does nothing. Which is uh, crazy to think. Togetic does continual risks. Sorry guys, I'm just writing down the kill because I'm going to update this for them. That's the thing again. This is just a really just tedious process. It's it's like watching a game of football if you're not you're not one of the passionate ones like they are in Guardiola. You know, you think it's a bit boring, but it's really entertaining. Katrina here. Also the pressure does help here. I think it's pressure. If it's infiltrator that was in a better set on the manual's part, beating subsets. And also, by Pablito not bringing many physical attackers, he sort of uh, locks himself into a very narrow sort of thing. And like, Emmanuel just continually goes for his sleep talks. The Katrina here, sitting on the field. He switches out, finally, into Tangrowth. Not having any knockoff things really hurts this thing as well. Like, Leaf Storm is 27%, but if you had a knockoff, it would have been so much better. And that's an easily Oko's from the uh, Katrina. Like, even like, he's just toying with his opponent, I think. For those who don't know, Emmanuel puts so much time when he plays his friends. His friends, to him, are his greatest rivals. I know that even when he had was so busy with work last season, he told me, like, he said he was preparing for, like, three lunch breaks in a row, just knowing me. And he said he knows how, he knew, he also said that he didn't know how Pablito played. I think Pablito shows a lot of promise from this battle. I mean, a 4-0 to someone who 11 0 Kanto, and people in Kanto had a harder time against Emmanuel than I think Pablito did. I think... Pablito just got counted by the one set, which being this uh, Spirit Tomb. I sort of did spoil the match, but that's alright, I'm just reviewing this game for them. Earthquake here, finally the Hitmonlee comes in. Hitmonlee should have came in a lot earlier. If they'd had Foresight Close Combat, it would be a very different game in my opinion. I think Emmanuel sort of gets sick, sick of it, and sort of wants to go into Ali, predicting that high jump kick. But, I don't know why Emmanuel switched out, maybe predicting like, I don't know. No, Ali comes in. I don't know why I'm saying it isn't like the Muslim person, but I mean Muhammad Ali. And as Emmanuel, as I was saying before, this is one of Emmanuel's favorite Pokemon because it's just before his birthday that this Pokemon comes out of hiding. Toxic again. It doesn't really do much. Emmanuel's just sort of like toying with his opponent here. I think the match is pretty much over, even though it's just five four. And it's over. I, unless Pablito brings out some massive heat. Like, this is... The flamethrower is a really nice sound, like a really nice tech thing. Like, he, I mean, but like Emmanuel even says this, like, now he goes down in Alvin. 
and like Alvin using that victory star, like this is just shows how good of a prepper Emmanuel is. Going for that sub, easily subbing up on Togetic. And just goes for a thunder. And like, this is just shows how good Emmanuel is. Easily setting up in the face of Vince. The Thunderbolt there, unfortunately not being able to take him out, but like, this just shows the power of Cess. But in saying that, you can't take anything from Pablito. Like, Pablito tried hard, and his efforts really shows through this match. And that's something I want to congratulate Pablito for. A lot of people rage quit during these matches. Pablito toughed it out, and he and he did something the honourable thing, which was he didn't really talk any rubbish in the chat. And like, you have to commend Pablito on that. Like, you, his sport, sportsmanship, and like this, like this is only round one, I think, of Pablito versus Emmanuel. I think we'll see Pablito versus Emmanuel round two. And I think the Battle of Guardiola will be back on again. But Emmanuel holds the Citadel for the moment. I'm so keen to see who will hold it next. As always, guys, this has been The Flying Bird. Let me know what you thought of this game. Do you want to see more of Emmanuel's games? Drop a like, leave a comment, and until next time, see you later.